Hello Aquarius, welcome to your tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember that the most important part of any tarot reading, well, it is you. Here is some hermit energy. Now, we had a couple of cards here that kind of toppled out of the deck. So we're going to use those as our starting point. And what we're going to do is continue with our Dove and Serpent spread. So we have a lot of very important energy today. This really, there's a lot of majors going on here. Um, a lot going on. If there's anything you need me to pray over, meditate upon, set positive energy toward, please let me know. I'm gonna finish up the path of the serpent here. This, wow, you've got a really intense life, I can tell. Um, mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. Gonna use the Wade Smith deck for this. Hopefully, uh, I don't drop uh, another handful of cards. Then we'll be here all day. Um, okay, so this is the card that we're going to set aside. We're not going to look at it until the very end. We'll put Frog and Alien on top. And at the end of the reading, we'll see if that card might tie everything together and give us the confirmation we need, right? So uh, we've got Major, 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 Major. Um, so we've got those Majors there. And then we've got some fire, we've got some air and some earth, we've got some air and some earth, a little bit of water, a little bit more fire. It's pretty balanced, actually. There's a lot of serious stuff going on in the path of the dove here, right? A lot of serious stuff. But I feel like as we process that serious stuff, we're getting to this ten of discs at the end. So right away, just to keep you tuned in, I'm going to tell you, the last card is the ten of discs. This is the right application of energy to create wealth and abundance around you. This is, at the end of the day, you're really sitting on a pile of treasure, okay? Uh, but we got to look through these cards to see what this treasure is going to look like and what it's going to take for you to get to that, that treasure chest, right? So let's find out. The first card that we, we pulled out was this Hermit Energy. I feel as if you've been doing a lot of introspection lately. I think that you may have kind of been taking a break from things, you know, taking a little bit of time to yourself to rest, to relax, to recuperate, to restore yourself. Um, I think that you have been really fluctuating. You've been involved in a really kind of intense, um, battle, struggle, maybe maybe it's the fight of your life, right? Um, because we're going, let's see, we're going from emperor and fire to hermit and empress, right? So these two are kind of, these are two opposite ends of things, right? Um, I feel like right now you're in a period of trying to kind of nurture yourself, your pets, your plants, your people, right? Trying to be at home, be introspective, be loving, yielding, nurturing, kind of like water, you know. I think you've been trying to build up love. You've been trying to express love. It's been very gentle. And then you'll put your armor on, you'll go back into the world, and you'll fight. Maybe this is you at work, and this is you at home. This is you out in public. This is you, you know, in the privacy of your own room or whatever. I feel like there's two sides of you here. And um, it really is through this ability to, you know, maybe you're leaving work at work. And when you come home, you're gentle, you're nurturing, you're loving, you're supportive. But when you're out, when you're at work or when you're out in the world doing your work, maybe you're, maybe you're retired. Uh, whatever it is that you do kind of during the day, right, outside, you are in charge. You're the authority. You are rather stern, strict, kind of ruthless at times, if you need to be. Now, I think that you're, you're fair, but 
you can be very stern when you need to be. So I think that it's it's part of this separation, kind of, right? This ability to maybe compartmentalize a little bit. Um, I think this is what we're striving for, okay? We see this death energy at the very top. This is the evolution, the transformation of your, uh, your nature, right? We're not changing anything. You're not becoming a different person. You're learning how to become the best version of you that you can. You're, you're learning how to become that butterfly that we all want to be, right? And it hasn't been easy for you. We see this eight of swords in the background. This is behind you. And this is, um, this is kind of a lot of like holding ourselves back because we've kind of lacked a little bit of confidence maybe in the past, in the past. There's been this, um, this lack of clarity or this lack of, of kind of like an organization to kind of, you know, know, uh, what steps to take to get well, I guess to get to this ten of discs, pentacles, the the ten of diamonds or, or coins here that we're we're trying to get there. Okay, let's keep that in mind. That's where we're going. That is true wealth, financial wealth, yes, but wealth in a grander, larger sense of the word. Okay. Well, we started here. This was really not knowing where to go, what to do, not even really knowing who we are having so many conflicting thoughts that were just kind of stuck here. Didn't know where to move. Didn't know how to move. Okay. And I think that this kind of, um, this was damaging to our self-esteem a little bit. We lacked a little bit of confidence. I think that this card is really strongly tied into this three of swords that's down here in your general energy, but it's at the bottom. Okay. So, uh, I think there's a reason why this is in the past, right? Because now we're getting out of this. We're no longer tied up by our own thoughts and moods and uh, opinions about ourselves, etc. We're no longer sabotaging ourselves. So we're getting out of that. But we still have this Three of Swords that's down here, kind of at the root. This is the root of us, right? And this, I think, is, again, related to this past Eight of Swords. And this is the, the memory of negative experiences. This is the mental understanding, the intellectual, reasonable understanding of the trauma that we went through. The, just all the bad stuff in our life, right? Maybe all the things that led up to that Eight of Swords. Um, it's not that we have cut ourselves off from this. This is still down here. This is general energy. What? That's weird, right? Because that's still part of who we are. We're not ignoring it. We're not denying it. We're not cutting ourselves off from this. We're not trying to cover it up. We're not, you know, we're not wearing it like a badge of, of, uh, of honor or anything, but we're not denying it. We're not trying to erase it from history. We're cutting it off from this Eight of Swords. We don't want it to hold us back, This, these negative experiences, these memories, these traumatic events, this pain that we've experienced in our life. We're not going to let it hold us back anymore. We're un untying it from this Eight of Swords. But it's still a fundamental part of who we are and what we've been through. Okay? So this is still a, a root factor in your life. And I think it should be that way. And we'll get to a few reasons why that is, is so in a moment here. But to finish the path of the, of the dove here, what we're trying to embrace is more of this nurturing, healing, introspective energy. And I think that you are in this process. And the first step of this process may be you're cutting off or you're separating your painful past, your history, the negative stuff that we've been through. I don't want to get specific, right? We've all we all have something. Uh, untangling that from the Eight of Swords, right? 
We want to keep the three, three of swords, right? We want to keep our history. We want to keep the, the experiences that we've been through. They're part of who we are, but we're not going to let them hold us back anymore. So that's the first step in this kind of transformative process with this death card. We're trying to re-emerge in our life, able to, to switch between these two. Maybe we've been all force and fire for a long time, right? Maybe we've just been complete kind of bullies, tyrants in our lives. And we need to get a little bit more yielding, nurturing, caring, compassionate. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe we've been too much of a pushover, a doormat. Um, we've been too adapt, adapting, adapt, adaptable. One of those. We've been too accommodating, too yielding. Too much like water, not enough like fire, right? Either one of these all day, all night is going to be bad for us, right? So it was one or the other, and now we're trying to get a blending. We're trying to understand how to make both of these energies blend together and work for us to get us to this wealth, this 10 of discs, pentacles, diamonds, coins. Um, and I think through this process, I think this process is ongoing with you. Okay. I don't think, I don't think this is anything new. I don't think that I'm surprising you with any information. I think you're probably just nodding your head thinking, yeah, I, I know. Because you're seeing already some progress. You're seeing your, your ability to, to shift between these two and maybe not get so heated about things, but also not let people push you around. Right? We're starting to see some change. Whatever camp you fall into, if you're in this extreme or the, the, the fire extreme or the water extreme, whichever camp you're in, I think you're already starting to see some benefits of, of this, this transformation, this blending of the energies. Right, You're starting to see the progress. This is the nine of discs down beneath everything. This is you recognizing that you're making progress. You are gaining ground here. Okay, we're not just treading water um, or just, you know, boiling in the, the hot water here. Uh, you're, you're making progress. It might be slow. For some of you, it might be great leaps and bounds. Other people, it may be incremental, but we're doing it, right? We're getting closer to our goal, closer to the kind of correct, um, the, the correct manipulation of our energies, Right, the correct alignment of our energies. And I think that's very important. And that brings us now over to the path of the serpent. So we've got the three of swords as our foundation. Right, This is at the bottom of everything. This is, this is why, well, this and the eight of swords, this is why we've fallen to one of these extremes or the other. Okay, And maybe you're one of these people that certain periods of your life you're too much water other periods of your life you're too much fire maybe at work you're too much water at home you're too much fire or the other way around any combination of this of the extremes is is not going to be a good thing what we have to do is marry emperor and empress together the alchemical union right i wonder if this is going to be the art or temperance card the mystery card blend these two together marry these two together and then these can be their, their children, right? Force and fire and also um, disengagement, right? Engaging uh, the problem and then also withdrawing from the problem, not letting things bother us, right? You got your cloak on and it's kind of like water off a duck's back. Or you can also engage. You can, you can use this force and fire, this confidence, this assertiveness, when you need it. And then you know when to just kind of ignore things too, right? So this, I think, is really, um, it's a very interesting kind of union of energies here. I really like that. Uh, but anyway, the the Three of Swords is kind of the, the reason why we've been in one extreme or the other, okay? Why we've had some dysfunction there. But born out of that, is this Ace of Cups. This is a real love, a real compassion. I think you've learned how to have compassion for yourself. 
you've learned how to have compassion for others. Now, this card is in the position of your environment or the way that you relate to others. So I think that there is this uh, kind of empathy that um, has been born out of this Three of Swords, out of this trauma, out of these painful experiences. You've really learned how to be uh, compassionate and, and empathetic. And I think this really allows you to connect with people, right? And connecting with people on a really deep emotional, spiritual level might be one reason why we have trouble in one extreme or the other. We care so much, we're either all too much fire. We care so much that maybe we're just too much water. Does that make sense? Where we're, we're um, our reactions to people and to their needs or to, you know, we, we want the best for people and so we might fall into these extremes of behavior, either extreme water or extreme fire. But it's because we feel so connected. It's because we care so much, right? Uh, so this is a really good card. This is a really wonderful and very special um, way of experiencing people with this kind of connectedness. Now, um, exactly what I just talked about, how that Ace of Cups, that love and compassion, that caring that we have for everybody leads us to these maybe extreme behaviors. This is the Knight of Wands. This is extreme behavior. This is um, getting so carried away by this Ace of Cups that it's like the horse just takes off with us, right? It just bolts and we, we have no control over it. And that takes us to one extreme or the other here. So this is in the position of what we don't want. This is what we, we kind of want the opposite of this. We want, well, we don't, maybe we don't want the opposite, right? What do we fill in this, this empty space with? Okay. That's the question. Maybe that's going to be the mystery card. Kind of what do we replace this impulsive behavior with? Okay. Um, trying to think of what would be the ideal thing to put in, in that. I think the art or temperance card, honestly, we don't want the opposite of fire on fire. We don't want water on water. Um, we could do, you know, a, a, a fire and water combination, which would be that art or temperance card. So let's, let's see the mystery card and maybe that will be what we're expecting, but we have to keep in mind this 10 of discs at the end of the path of the serpent. That's what we're ultimately going for. This feeling of abundance and wealth. And again, it's not just financial, it's not just physical wealth, okay? It's not just money. It is a feeling, a state of being a wealthy person. You have a wealth of love, a wealth of care, a wealth of really quality people, quality experiences. You have money too, right? Safety, security, stability in your life emotionally, financially, intellectually, spiritually, because the earth energy. These discs contain every other card in the tarot deck, right? Every other element, every other number. The ace through the ten of every suit is represented, whoops, is all kind of crystallized in this card. So this is the ultimate kind of goal, the ultimate uh, perfection, really, that we're after. And you know, perfection, um, literal perfection is, is unattainable, but we want to experience, we want to get to that state of feeling like we've really succeeded. Like we, we have a lot of abundance and wealth around us, right? Uh, so again, it's wealth in that kind of larger sense. Now this mystery card, um, I don't think it's going to be the art or temperance card, honestly. I, I want it to be, but I don't feel like it will be, okay? And <clears throat> to me, I think that would be too easy. I think that would be too on the nose. It would be too perfect. And we know that there is no such thing as, as literal perfection. So what, this, what could this be instead? Um, this is going to be, I think, the final lesson that we need to learn in order to achieve that missing piece that should go right here, which I think would be art or temperance card. 
But there's one thing, there's something else that we have to learn first. <clears throat> Ace of Cups again. So it really, and the Ace of Cups was right here in the position of the environment. We go Ace of Cups and then we go to this impulsive behavior. And we need to go back to the Ace of Cups. Okay. We need to perhaps, um, there's still a lesson here that we need to learn. Maybe this is having more uh, understanding. Maybe the Ace of Cups, maybe it is that pool of water. Maybe it is that, that cup, that bowl with that still water that we need to gaze into. And we need to reflect that self-reflection, right? Maybe this is more introspection that we need to do. Maybe we need to look down into that water, into that bowl of water, and look at this Three of Swords a little bit further. Maybe there is more there that we need to process, more issues that we need to work through um, before we can get past this impulsive behavior. And I think, I think that's why we have a repeat of this Ace of Cups. We're not yet done with the, the self-reflection, the gazing into this bowl and, and having, the, having visions, right? of ourself, of our true nature, of whatever spirit needs to reveal to us. It's almost like we're, we're scrying this, this bowl of water. And we're trying to um, receive the message of what else we need to do. What else about this Three of Swords do I need to learn so I can get past this Knight of Wands and get to the wealth, get to this uh, you know, virtual perfection. Well, that's the that's the question that we need to ask. We're going to go ahead and do an extended uh, Aquarius. If you want to stick around, and I hope that you will, just click on the link up here. That'll give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Aquarius, but for all of the zodiac signs that we read for here. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me read for you. It really is my pleasure and my honor. And I want to thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.